What is up everyone, Max Lin here, and welcome to episode 16 of The Mind Here. This is my bi-weekly update to everyone about upcoming works for this channel, discussing what I do behind the scenes, and talking about other things that come to mind. It also serves as a way to keep myself externally motivated and accountable to get my work done. If you're interested in how I make my music and videos, feel free to take a look at previous episodes. Welcome to all of you who are watching for the first time. If you like my content and want to see more, please consider subscribing. Let's start off with my transcriptions. Last week, I posted my piano and cello cover of Bo Burnham's Can't Handle This. At the start of this two-week session, I had basically finished the sheet music. All I had to do was create the audio file in FL Studio and draw up the art for the video. For a long time, I've used MuseScore's native audio for my videos, but recently I started remaking them in FL because they sounded better. I get a little bit more control over the sound quality, and although the piano isn't bad in MuseScore, the strings aren't great. Now normally, I create a MIDI file and put it through Synthesia to generate the piano roll video. However, this cover had both piano and cello, which wouldn't make too much sense on a piano roll. Also, I felt that a simple piano roll just wouldn't do this song justice. I wanted something that captured the beautiful performance that accompanied the original song, as well as something that displayed some genuineness. That was why I chose that pose for the silhouette bow in the cover I made, and why I made it look transparent and glowing. Experimenting with the fade animation, I lit up the figure when the song was reaching a lighter and more powerful section. Towards the end, I made the figure flash to resemble what the lights were doing during his actual performance. Only after combining all of that did I feel my project was complete. So that brings me to the new transcription. This one was one I had worked on a long time ago, but I shelved it until now. I had the melody and a few chords figured out, but that was it. As I went back over my work, I realized how powerful my music theory knowledge was. Taking a closer look at the chord progression of the song, I was able to spot some mistakes in both the melody and the chords that would not have been obvious by an untrained ear alone. I was, however, surprised at the accuracy I had written before. Another more advanced mistake that I caught was in how I notated an accidental. This song is in B major, which means the 6 chord is a G sharp minor chord. One of the chords in there was a 7 diminished of 6 chord, which basically means the 7 chord of G sharp minor. That special chord would be F double sharp, A sharp, and C sharp. Of course, F double sharp is enharmonically the same as G natural, so the novice me thought it was G natural. This was something that, without music theory, I would never have been able to catch. So, as of right now, I have fixed the melody line and figured out the basic chord progressions of the song. Besides the transcription, I also managed to create a new lo-fi song. I planned to do something like this, but only after I finished my online JavaScript course, which I had planned to work on after transcribing Can't Handle This. This is my new prioritization procedure in progress, and I am happy to say that it's worked beautifully so far. Anyways, I chose lo-fi because of its simplicity, since I would be getting back into FL after a break. Also, I'm not that great at it yet, so this gives me some room for error. I mean, lo-fi means low fidelity music, with mistakes being what makes it lo-fi, so it was perfect. This song gave me an opportunity to practice and review my FL skills, but this time around I was a bit more production focused since I had done the learning already, I just needed a refresher. I decided to name the song Success for a little irony since at first glance it does not sound like success at all. However, I believe this tells the true story of success. It doesn't seem like success for most of the journey, but only after serious dedication and perseverance through mundane work does it end up becoming something beautiful. The animation I made in the background was designed to reflect the mood of the song, and the silhouette on the hill was a way to capture the audience on a focal point while at the same time giving the feeling that the song was speaking to them. And while all of that was going on, I was also preparing for my transition to college next fall. As I worked on the housing applications and other paperwork, I began looking at my work in a different way. Everything I did, I put in the context of how it would work when I started college classes. I reminded myself that my schedules and habits are a reflection of my readiness for independence to keep myself on track. I realized that severe senioritis, or lack of motivation to do anything high school related, that I was feeling was really the evaluation of my efforts and how it would benefit me in a new context. Obviously, most of my high school work no longer mattered, and with the COVID-19 situation, it mattered even less. 
Taking a look at my YouTube progress, I realized that when college coursework goes into full swing, I'll have little time to do even my update videos. I may not have time to work on transcription, and hence nothing to play in the background of the video. I might not even have anything channel related to update, but as of now, I still want to do these videos. If nothing else, it'll keep me on my toes. I might start doing actual vlogs instead of narrations, just because that'll be more feasible than these kinds of videos. For now though, those are just shower thoughts. Oh yeah, just as a side note, I will no longer be including a work in progress of my current transcription at the end of the video. I feel that they don't add too much, especially when the piece is in its early phases, and make the video unnecessarily long. Also, if I don't work on the transcriptions, then I will obviously not have anything there. What I'll do now is when I get close to finishing, I'll post it on MuseScore. So if you're interested, go on my MuseScore and check it out. Now for my favorite part, some Q&A. Alpha Prose asks, when you're taking a break from doing something productive, what do you do? Do you think a break is very necessary? And how long a break is good until it becomes just lazing out? Well, thank you, Alfred. Let me start by addressing the first part of the question. Typically, I read, watch videos, or play some video games when I'm not actively being productive. I might also do chores depending on my energy level. Hanging out with friends takes considerably more energy since I like to keep to myself, so that almost falls into the productive category for me. It is nice to talk with someone and have a genuine conversation, though. As for if breaks are necessary, I'd definitely say so. Almost everything in life is cyclical, from seasons to sleep cycles, and productivity is no exception. We can put in an enormous amount of effort to push through one project, but perpetually doing that is a recipe for burnout. Some people can handle more work, but that just moves the bar higher up. Everything is relative. That means the amount and quality of break also depends on the person. For me though, a general rule of thumb is about a quarter of the time spent on the project uh, will be spent for a break after completing the project. With longer projects, the ratio is smaller, say two weeks on a project and two days of lessened workload. With smaller projects, the ratio is larger, say a two hour essay and an hour of gaming. Another thing about me is that I have this sort of defense mechanism that prevents me from being lazy all the time. I'll know when I've spent too long doing nothing, when I start feeling disgusted with myself. After a certain point, there is almost a nausea response to not doing anything, because I can't stand doing nothing for a long period of time. Hence, when I take a longer break, the brain dead level is not quite that low. Alright, that brings a conclusion to this episode. Thank you everyone for watching, I appreciate the support you all have given me throughout this process. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to let me know in the comments section down below. Stay safe, eat well, be grateful, and I will see you in the next video.